somebody to pass it on. Hi, I just, I just want Pete to say something. <laughs> kids who actually were living alone and uh, actually in Red Hook. And sometimes I start noticing that a lot of kids were left with their grandmothers or their parents disappear or they'd be around for like a couple weeks and live with their friends, their, you know, their friends, family, and they were surviving. I was like, wow, I never really, this is a great story. So I said, I want to do this. I want to try to make this happen. So I went to all my relationships. I went to Fox Searchlight Fox. I went to Sony. Nobody wanted to make the movie because they felt like it's a 13-year-old black kid, 8-year-old Asian kid, who's going to go see the movies, a doll film. But I was just determined because I really loved the story. And I felt like, you know, as a director, you should just tell good stories. It's a story that nobody ever heard of. So, so I, just went, I just went for it. And it didn't happen the first year. I went away, did another movie, came back to it. This just stayed with me. And um, I was determined, and we finally got it together independently. Went to Sundance, and Cold Black and Lionsgate picked it up. So we are, we are opening this weekend, October 11th. So, so tell everybody to go see it. So. Well, this is interesting because in 2009, I looked at New York for, I feel like the movie wasn't going to work if I didn't have the right kids. So in 2009, I didn't find anyone. So we started the movie again in 2010. I looked at New York, looked at Chicago, and then we looked in LA. And um, Skyler was there in audition. And you know what's interesting? He was there the same day Ethan was there. They didn't know each other. They were there the same day and they didn't even know each other. And immediately I put them in a chemistry test right away because I felt they were very good individually and it worked out. But then the movie didn't go that year. So we had to wait until 2011. And I thought they were going to be too big at that time. So, but they were the same height. They came in. And they came in on the same day again, you know, which was great. And then they did a chemistry test and I said, okay. I'm gonna get him in a room right away with Jordan. Because Jordan was came down to see us. I'm gonna get him in right away. And your chemistry test was great. And I was like, these are the, these, this is the cast. These are the guys. So they were just great actors. They took their craft very seriously. I learned as a director that I can really talk to them like an adult. I didn't really have to, 
change my vocabulary as a director with them. I could just go right to the subtext. They were there for the boot camp. They were there working with their coach. They were there. We were down uh, dealing with a lot of addiction programs. They talked to the kids in uh, Red Hook and met a lot of kids. So I like to thank their parents who were there for allowing me to have the time. Thank you. Congratulations, I adored it. I'm always interested in locations, and I was very excited because Fulton and Nostrum is my stomping ground. <laughs> what made you pick that location of Flatwood, excuse me, of bed Crown Heights area? Well, um, when I first auditioned for the role, uh, right after I put the role, uh, George and I decided to meet that following day. And uh, he wanted to get together so we can scout some locations. Um, and he was all proud of his name of the name. So um, it, had the, it had the right feel for us and the story that we were aiming to convey and uh, decided to go with that. And that's one of the main reasons why we chose uh, Brooklyn and the Ingersoll Project. Hi, good evening, folks. I'd just like to uh, reiterate what the young man said. And the Oscar goes to. <laughs> auditioning for the roles and probably other films as well and it was fun because I was sitting in there and there was this little girl who was freaking out that I was sitting in the room with. and so then Skylar was like yeah it's her and then, and then after her audition she walks out of the room and I'm like wait what wait what wait, Skylar did, did, did you see that is that oh my god so we were all sitting down there and so we got and then they brought us all in together, and it was just so much fun. We immediately, well, I, I love kids, but these boys are really, really special, and I learned so much from them. I mean, you guys saw it on the screen. They were just absolutely incredible, and I'm just, I was so honored to be in the film with you. So honored. together at the end of our audition they took a picture of the three of us together and it just it was perfect like we saw the picture and there was us together and that was it it was Alice Mr. and Pete so that's how it happened I'm in the middle of the pictures because I'm so small <laughs> second of the movie. I'm a big baby, but I want to give you a hug at the end of this. Don't be weirded out. Anyway. <laughs> I wanted to know what is like the best part of filming and the worst part for you guys. <laughs> um, really, there was no worst part or best part. I think everything was the best. And I wish I could do it all over again. Truly, it was... It's special. So. Woo! Yeah, I think yeah, there, I agree with you. there was no real worst part. It was all good, but um, yeah, I wish I do wish we could do that all over again. Yeah, I just want to say to that question, like with these guys, it was interesting because usually, you know, like on a film shoot, you have twelve hours to shoot the film. Because we were shooting this summer, we only had eight hours because the kids' hours. So that really, they had 156 scenes. So with eight hours, first two days, I remember I was talking to Skyler and I was like, man, I, I was to myself, I was like, I don't think we're gonna make it. 
you know? And this guy who just looked at me and said, we got you. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, all right, we're cool. And I have to say, in all the films that I did, it was really draining emotionally because sometimes it wasn't fair because we would give you Skyler and Ethan, we will give you guys three or four emotional scenes in one day. And you had to really get in and get out of it pretty quickly. And you had to do it in eight hours. And I never really saw anybody do that shift that fast. So these two guys and the rest of the cast, too, with Jeffrey and Anthony. Like, when those guys got involved, everybody kept saying, who's the kids? Even Anthony Quincy, you know, like, uh, Jeffrey, who's, who's, who's the kids? It ain't going to work without the kids. So, so as soon as they saw them, they were very happy. And it's just their transitions and how they were able to get into scenes in eight hours and do all that. Uh, it was phenomenal, so that's this, these two guys here, so. I want to say thank you again, it's a wonderful film, and I wanted to ask a question. I thought it was very unique how you kept Pete knowing right from wrong throughout everything, and I wanted to know if that was something you did on purpose, and I also want to thank you for it. Um, let Anthony Mackey do something totally different. It was really refreshing to see him play something different. So thank you. Thank you. Hey, Pete, you want to answer that? Oh, okay. it's, it's not my, it's not my question. It's yours, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it was in the script. You know, the idea that Pete was his conscious. It was always things that he said. Mister is the person who believed that he could. You know, he just believed what his mom said. His mom said. No one is ever going to help me. Nobody ever will. That's what he believed in his life. And, and when Pete came in his life, it changed all that. So I always believe, I love characters when they transform, you know, um, when they think differently from scene one to the very end. And Pete was that person who made him believe that. And I always believe like the movie was like Midnight Cowboy, where two people who never be together, and they find out that they need each other, and their perspective changed, and Pete was that perspective for them. And the, the scene that really made me feel that I really wanted to do to direct the film was the scene with Anthony Mackie when Pete is actually gone. When he goes to Anthony, he says, Look, tell me what you want me to do. I'll do anything. I'll sell for you just to get him out for me. And I really felt that was the choice that a lot of young African-American men or, Afri or men, period, who's on the street like that make that decision because they have no choice. And that's, that was the defining moment. It was because of a friendship with Pete was able to uh, allow that. So that was always in the material. We just enhanced it, and their behavior brought that out a lot better than what we had on the paper. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you, you had some really amazing actors, obviously. Jeffrey Wright, Anthony Mankey, Jordan Sparks, kind of playing against type of what you sort of think of them. When you're making those decisions to kind of cast folks, do they come out to you, like a Jordan, to get the role? Did you go get Anthony? How did you get these people to kind of do these different type of roles they normally don't do? Well, that was the first thing for me, working outside of the Hollywood system for the first time in a long time, we can make our own choices. Originally, you know, like for the role of uh, Adewale, the cop play, I knew with the kids is the lead role, I had to get some names in the movie. And initially, I was going outside the box, and I knew it wouldn't work. Like my relationship with Robert De Niro, I was going to have Robert De Niro play the cop. And then we started talking, and then, it just didn't seem like he would do it. Like, it just felt weird to they were chasing the kids around. <laughs> you know? So then the second time, when, and then I was thinking, I actually needed money for the movie, so I gave the script to The Rock, because I worked with him on the movie. And I was going to ask him for money, but then he called me and he said, I want to play the cop. And I was like, I don't know if I want The Rock to play this role. <laughs> I don't want to tell him no. But it came down to it at the end of the day, the producer was like, let's make our own choices. And then these were all choices. I love Jordan. I love the work, what she did. She read the script. She, you know, we came to a conclusion that we wanted to work together. Uh, Jeffrey, uh, I always wanted to work with him. I had to chase him down. He's a hard person. His phone, you know, he don't answer his phones. He don't read. He just, you just gotta grab him when you can. So I chased him down for four weeks until the last two days. I didn't know if he was gonna show or not. And then he showed up in the character. So it's like, so that's just how it is. And Anthony Mackie and you know, Ronald Wally and Jordan, you know, like, when, you know, with Reggie, I loved his work when he came into the audition room. He was just phenomenal. He actually auditioned for another role. 
And I just, you know, those are the choices you can make when you make it independently, and that's one of the great things about making it outside of the system. All right, we have our last question back here. Uh, just real quick, I wanted to take my hat off to the to the cast. Phenomenal, phenomenal. Y'all yeah, young cats, bananas. Um, just everybody, without signaling anybody out, the choices were great, your cast and director ought to get a raise. Um, <laughs> As, a, as somebody who actually has lived in the, uh, in the in the boys' homes, the group homes, and everything for years, thank you for keeping that honest and fearful and everything, and, and even from the homeless aspect and living by yourself. Um, I don't know your government name, Mister, uh, but I got, my question is for you: what's your, what's your government name so I can address you appropriately? Skyler. Okay, Skyler. Um, Skyler. Where did you What did you do to? Because clearly you're not homeless. What did you do to prepare yourself for that? Because that's heavy. It's a lot. So I just I'm curious as to you know you mature for your age. Your spirit is about forty. But <laughs> what you do to prepare yourself? Because it, it was awesome. Everybody was awesome. Really? Um, you know, Tori sent me to those those meetings and camps. I got to meet the kids who actually have been through that. Um, the drug abuse, the running away, and that fueled me for mystery. And, you know, I had all these great people up here to thank for helping me get my character. And my grandfather passed away, like, a few years back. And that was a lot of the emotional part for me. Because I still wish he was here. Like a lot of us, I still wish somebody was here, and that's where I got my emotional side from. So, thanks to George, Jordan, Reggie, even everyone, I was able to bring that out. So, thank you. Thank you so much. Another round of applause for a great film. Thank you guys. October 11th this Friday, tell your friends, team Ryan, Cold Black, Thursday, thank you guys.